Hello class. In this video, we will create a Jeff the Killer horror scene, and will make the killer chasing our filmmaker. First, let's import our background video. Drop the video onto the comp icon, and it will create a new composition that is the same dimensions and frame rates as the video. Select the video layer, go to the top menu, Animation, and apply Track Camera. It will analyze the video and generate tracking data. Once it's done, you will see these colorful dots, and they are the tracking points. At the Effect Controls window, click on Create Camera. This will create a 3D camera that simulates the 3D space in the video. Let's import the killer video. As you can see, the killer video only has about 5 seconds runtime, but our background video has about 8 seconds long. We will create a composition for the killer and extend the runtime. First, apply the Keylight 1.2 effect on the killer video and key out the green background. Then, we'll look for a frame that connects to the first frame, so we can loop this run cycle. Cut at this frame. Right click on the layer, go to Time, Time Stretch, and put 40. It will shrink the runtime to 40% of its original time to speed up the video. Then, hit the Command key and the D key to duplicate this layer, and connect its start frame to the last frame of the original clip. Select both layers and duplicate them, and place them at the right time. Now, go to the Project window, right-click on the killer's composition, and go to the Composition settings. Change the duration of the composition to 9 seconds. Then, duplicate the layers and fill the gap. Once we finish this, we will have 9 seconds run cycle video, and we can bring them into the background video. First, we will need to decide where to place the killer in the scene. Put the cursor on the video, and it will automatically look for 3 tracking points to form a plane. Right click and create null, and the null object will be placed in the center of the 3 tracking points. This null object will be referenced to place the killer, so we can rename it to Track Position 1. Go to the background video and select a 3D camera tracker, and it will make the tracking points appear again. Let's pick up the second track position, and it will be where the killer will run to. Right click and create null. Rename it to Track Position 2. Let's drop in the killer composition. Use the anchor point tool to place its anchor point on his feet, so he will stand on the ground instead of floating in the air. Check on the 3D layer icon. If you do not see it, right click on the layer panel, go to columns and check on switches. Select both the killer layer and the track position 1, hit the P key to display their position channel. Copy the position of the track point and paste it onto the killer's position channel. Now, the killer will stand on the first track point. Create a keyframe on the first frame, so the position value will be saved. Go to the last frame, and create the second keyframe. Copy the position of the second track point, and paste it onto the killer's position channel. Now, the killer will run from the first track point to the second track point. We can scale him down a little bit, and maybe move the second keyframe forward so he could run faster. Now, we can add some shadow under the killer. Go to the project window, and duplicate the killer composition. Rename it to Killer Shadow Comp. In the Shadow Comp, right-click on the first layer, go to Layer Styles and apply a color overlay. Change the overlay color to a gray color. Copy the color overlay and paste it onto all other layers in this composition.
Drop the shadow comp into the background comp and move its anchor point to the killer's feet. Select both the killer layer and the shadow layer. Hit the P key to open the position channel. Copy the killer layer's position keyframes and paste them onto the shadow layer. Make sure you paste them at the exact same time. Now, the shadow layer should move with a killer. Go to the scale channel and scale down the shadow layer. Then, unlink the scale axis and put a negative value on the Y axis to flip the shadow. You may slightly move the shadow to adjust its position. At the second keyframe, the killer and shadow are out of frame, so we can go to the last frame of this comp and adjust the shadow's position. Be aware that it will create a third keyframe with the adjusted position values. You can simply move it and replace the second keyframe. Move the shadow layer underneath the killer layer, so the feet will on top of the shadow. Right click on the shadow layer and change its blending mode to multiply. Apply a Gaussian blur effect on the shadow and increase the value to make the shadow blurry. Hit the T key for transparency and lower down the opacity value of the shadow. Now the shadow should be more realistic. Check on motion blur for the killer layer and the shadow layer. So whenever the killer makes dramatic movements, it will have motion blur. If you don't see the motion blur icon, right click on the layer panel, go to columns and check on switches. Now, let's add some blood splatters on the ground to intensify the horror. Move your cursor on the floor and it will automatically pick up three tracking points to form a plane. Move until you see the red circle's direction matches the floor plane. Right click and create solid. Scale down this solid plane and we will use it as a reference to place the blood splatter texture. Use the same procedure and create seven more solid planes on the ground. Rename each solid plane you've created. Now, we will replace these solid plane with the blood splatter texture. Import the textures into the project. Drop in the first blood texture above the first track plane layer. We will keep its anchor point in the center. Check on the 3D layer icon. Copy the track plane's position and paste it onto the blood layer. Hit the R key for rotation. Copy the track plane's orientation value and paste it onto the blood layer. It will make the blood texture lay on the ground. We can hide the track plane and go to the rotation channel of the blood layer. Adjust its orientation along the z-axis so the placement looks more interesting. Adjust the scale and change the blending mode to multiply so the blood will blend into the floor tiles. Follow the same procedure to add the other blood textures to the scene. At about 4 seconds and a half, the killer exits the frame, and we can fade out. Right click in the layer window, and create a new solid layer. For the color, pick up the blood color around the shadow area. Hit the T key for transparency, and add two keyframes on the opacity channel. Set the value of the first keyframe as zero. Now, as the killer reaches the filmmaker, the screen fades out into a dark red color. We can also cut our work area to 5 seconds. When we render this composition into a video, it will only render the frames in the work area. Right click in the layer window and create a new adjustment layer. Drop a tint effect on the adjustment layer. Map the white color to a light blue color and map the black color to dark blue color. Lower down the tint opacity. Drop a curve effect on the adjustment layer. Boost up the bright colors and lower down the dark colors to increase the contrast of the video. Then, create a new solid layer and pick up a dark blue color. 
change its blending mode to multiply and lower the opacity to around 60%. Use the ellipse tool to draw a mask with the ellipse shape. Center the mask. And change the mask type from add to subtract. Add some values to the mask feather to soften the edge of the mask. Once you are satisfied with the result, you can go to File, Export, and add your composition to Media Encoder for rendering. Set the video format as H264, High Bitrate, and set the export location. Click on Render. The video will be exported into the AIM folder. That's the whole workflow of creating the Jeff the Killer Chase scene.